Setting the pod group on the X1225 is very simple, but it's different to how it's done on the X1224 and previous models of the car. It's different for the reason that we now have the center spring or what is now known as the rear bump spring uh, placed at the very back of the car. There's no more center spring on the, the center dampener. So the rear ride height is set through the spring in the rear in combination with the height of the rear axle, which you can adjust with a different axle height uh, plastic eccentrics that go into the rear bulkheads which these come in five different steps in the kit and they're also reversible so you have a pretty wide range of ride height uh, adjustments that it's possible to do depending on the tire size and the desired ride height of course so in this next step i'm going to show you how to quickly and easily set um, the desired uh, rear pod group so to adjust the pod group we first of all need to understand how we measure pod group so as you can see now, the rear ride height is measured here at the rearmost point of the chassis. We slide the ride height gauge underneath like this. You can see that the ride height is at this point 3.8 millimeters. So how do we check the pod group? You, you lift the chassis up as far as it goes and you check the ride height again. So it, at this point, the ride height gauge slides in at five millimeters, which means that from the static ride height, which is 3.8, to a fully pulled up chassis, like as far as it goes, before it bottoms out, is five millimeters. The difference is 1.2 millimeters. That's your pod droop in the rear. Um, pod droop setting usually is within the 0.6 to 1.2, 1.4 range. Uh, usually around one millimeter is a good um, starting point, initial setting. So what if we want to adjust this? What you're going to do is you're going to take a seven millimeter wrench. This is the same as used for the, the wheel nuts on a touring car. So it's a very common tool to have in your toolbox. You turn this plastic nut here clockwise or anti-clockwise. If we want to reduce pod droop, We'll turn this clockwise so tightening the rear bump spring now we need to recheck the right head because the right head will have probably have changed as well but actually it's still 3.8 but we're gonna lift this up it's still five we still need to tighten this more so we're gonna tighten this a bit more to get the reduced pod root that we're after So now you can see that the right height has increased in the rear. The right height is now 4.2 millimeters. And if we lift this up, you can see that the value at fully extended suspension is still five millimeters, but the static right height is 4.2 millimeters. So you have only a 0.8 difference between the static ride height and the fully extended suspension, which means we now have a reduced pod droop. We only have 0.8 millimeters, but the ride height now is obviously higher. So we're gonna have to change the eccentric plastic inserts to get the car back down to where we want it to be. So let's take these out, very simple. I'm going to change these eccentric inserts from a four dot insert, which you can see this is a four dot insert. I'm going to change these inserts to the three dot, which means the car will become lower. The rear ride height will become lower. Put these inserts in here. Axle goes back in. Make sure you don't forget any of the axle shims for the track width. Make sure you always have a slight amount of play, sideways play for the, 
the rear axle. Make sure you tighten the screw enough, but don't strip it. Okay, so now we've changed the inserts and we can see that the rear ride height is now uh, what it was before. So 3.8, but we're not going to pull the suspension up. We're going to verify the droop. So now it's 4.6 at fully extended, which means that the difference is 0.8. So we have a reduced pod droop, but we've retained the same static ride height. That's how you set pod droop on the X1225.